we have any votes for uh, how many people want this to go to go to Hollywood? <laughs> 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 okay. As long as he goes, so <laughs> <laughs> right away he goes. Okay, uh, our featured guest today is Debbie Gunner, our uh, incumbent uh, Register of Deeds. She was first elected in 1996 <coughs> as, as, as the Register of Men's Conveyance. Uh, she immediately got on the stick and got Joe Wilson to introduce a bill to, uh, to change the name of her office. Uh, it's now much more easy to pronounce register, uh, the uh, Register of Deeds. And, uh, and I had the, the privilege of uh, serving with her for six years uh, when I was on the county council. Uh, she was one of the few uh, county officers that followed things like personnel procedures and things like that to uh, 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 keep us from getting sued and things like that, which some other elected officials ended up <laughs> causing that to happen. Uh, she's also always very good with the budget. Uh, she, she, has, uh, she always came to us with reasonable requests. Uh, certainly an, an office that even the uh, most strident constitutionalist agrees that is, some, that is a legitimate government function. And... Uh, so she has served well over the years, and she's running for re-election. And here's Debbie Gunner. Thank you. Thank you. It's really nice to be with y'all today. I appreciate being able to um, speak with you. And as Dave said, I'm the Register of Deeds. I have been in office for 15 years. Um, I was. Prior to becoming the Register of Deeds, I was a real estate title abstractor for 13 years before taking office. That gave me the opportunity to attend, and I'm sure I did, attend every county in the state researching a title, which, you know, what, what prompted me to run was, you know, I thought, gosh, this county has a really great so-and-so, and this county has a really great so-and-so, and I was able to come in and kind of hybrid all of that, and it, it's, it's been very exciting um, 15 years. I'm married to Johnny Gunner for 27 years now. Those of you who know anything about Lexington High School Baseball and 1965, Johnny Gunner was the pitcher that took them to the state championship. <laughs> That's my husband. So, yeah, he's in the Lexington High School Hall of Fame. So. Um, I'm a member of Riverland Hills Baptist Church where I help with five-year-old choir. I sing in the adult choir, not very well, but I do. And uh, I am a Sunday school class caregiver. Um, I'm the co-chairman of the Legislative Committee for the Association of Clerks and Registers. That's a statewide group. I have been appointed by the South Carolina Chief Justice, Gene Toll, to the Clerks and Registers Advisory Committee for uh, the uh, Chief Justice. And I've served there since 2003. And I've also been uh, appointed by the President of the Association of Counties uh, to serve on the Legislative Policy Steering Committee, and I've uh, served on that committee. I've been appointed for the past six years to serve on that committee. And that's a little bit about me. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what is the Register of Deeds Office, and I think uh, 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 April was here and kind of explained it pretty good, but maybe I'll touch on a couple things that you didn't know before. Uh, it's a recording and public service office. It's the office where all the land records are recorded and maintained. Um, our job is to maintain records and make them readily available for viewing. Um, interesting fact, and, and I heard a little bit of this discussion, everything you guys do is public because <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> but um, uh, officially, the Lexington County Register of Deeds has records back to 1865. That's official. We have some records prior to that. The reason for that is that Sherman had already been to Richland County. He was running the state, burning all the courthouses. The farmers in Lexington County loaded up some of the books on their wagons and took them to their farms. 
and once the burning was over, they brought him back. So we have some records prior to 1865, and that's the reason why. Uh, we also assist the public uh, when they come in to look for a document. We have a lot of folks, you know, uh, where's my deed, I can't find my deed, and we have all of those records readily available for folks. Um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about my staff. Um, the members of my staff have been recognized before county council for a job well done 38 times in the past seven years, or I'm sorry, in the past 10 years, with a staff of seven that's one, almost one every quarter being recognized before county council. That's a citizen who said, who's been to my office and said, I had a good experience with this one or that one, and they wrote me and they told me, and these girls were recognized before county council. I'm really proud of that. They're knowledgeable and professional. I'm really proud of them. Um, some of the things I've done since taking office, I've implemented technology to reduce budget expenditures. Um, one example is we went from a vendor that cost $150,000 per year to an in-house, no-cost, county-owned system for computerized records management. I'm, I'm really proud of that, that budget reduction because that's an every year reduction. Um, We've used technology to reduce staff while keeping proper personnel in place uh, to serve efficiently. Um, we, I, I was one of the first in the state to make records available over the internet. internet. Now, a lot of counties do that now, but I was one of the first to implement that type of technology. Um, real estate agents know, attorneys know, abstractors know how much help that was to them, saves them a lot of time and money. Um, I scanned big index books into our computer system. That saves wear and tear on the books. Um, you never have to pick up an index book. Everything is on the computer. So um, that, was, that was a big help. Um, these are the books from 49 to 84, and then everything from 84 forward was already computerized. I established indexing rules um, to lower the error rate and to help make sure everybody was on the same page to look things up. Um, McDonald is a really good example. MC space E-O-N-A-L-D or MC D-O-N-A-L-D. It comes in both ways. We established an indexing rule that says it's only going to be indexed one way. That way you don't have a problem looking it up. So we've, we've done some things like that to improve. Uh, and these rules are posted on the internet and are available in my office. Um, I've also implemented a method for anyone who does find an indexing error uh, to inform the staff. And we have a way of reporting back to that person. This has been fixed, when it's been fixed, or, you know, this is an indexing rule and can't be changed. So, um, I have in implemented electronic reporting. This is really exciting. This just happened within the past year or so. This is where the attorney sits in his office. Have you been to any electronic reporting closings? Okay. Um, they, uh, it, it's, it's still very new, but, um, uh, and we have a couple of big firms, Rogers, Townsend, and Thomas, and uh, McAngus, Goodlock, uh, have uh, implemented this, and they, uh, what they do is they scan their documents into their computer, they upload it to me, I download it, I review it, record it, and send it back to Heavens in minutes. So we're real proud of that. It's a green initiative. It's less paper. Um, it saves the attorneys a lot of dollars on coming to the office to record. Um, it saves my staff time and effort. That's a, that's a paper document that doesn't have to be scanned into the system because it's already there. And um, one of the other things I'm really proud of is I've established a team player relationship with county council and county administration. I've, I've always felt like, you know, 
I'm doing this for a better Lexington County. I'm part of Lexington County. If, they're, if every other department, whether it be elected or not, is, has to tighten their belts, I have to tighten mine. So I, I've just felt conscientious in that manner. Um, I've worked hard to be a good steward of taxpayer dollars and to lead in a conscientious manner. And I feel like my approach to managing resources and I continue to make efforts to find more efficient ways to serve you and the public better and, and that reflects that I'm a proven leader. Uh, I'm proud to have served with honesty and integrity as your Lexington County Register students. So that's a little bit about me and I'm happy to entertain any questions you may have. Tell them what you told me about your staff, about the lady that's retiring. Okay. Um, as you all know, there's an economic downturn. Things are really slow here. Um, in our office, it's really slow. Um, I have a lady, and you know, I've never, I have reduced my staff by, by one already, but nobody lost their job. I didn't fire anybody. It happened through to attrition. I have another lady who is going to retire at the end of June. I'm just not feeling like I need to replace her right now. I think it is the prudent thing for me to do to not replace her if I don't have to and not worry about whether county council says, well, she's not using that position, I'm taking it away. I'll work with them later if that's what happens. But right now, I don't need to. I think it is the prudent thing to do. Not, and this is what I'm talking about, being a good steward of, tax, of your tax dollars. I don't need people in the office that aren't doing anything. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to try it, and if it works out, I'm done. That is the way it will be. How much money, if you like to save the taxpayers' money, that's what I hear you say. How much money are we saving by not filling that position? 33000 a year plus benefits. Plus benefits, okay. Mm -hmm. um, um, I know you've probably heard the story about the couple that bought some land and was starting to build on it and got it all graded out for the house and everything. Would your office be the people that would protect the county or the population of this county to make sure that situation didn't happen to somebody in Lexington County when you buy private property and all of a sudden EPA comes in and says you can't build on it because it's wetlands? Um, our office would contain all the records, and I'm not sure of the incident you're talking about, but our, our office would contain all the records that would show that that property was protected EPA wetlands. So, if a title abstractor came in and did a search on that particular parcel of property and didn't find the document, that would tell the attorney mm -hmm. can't build on this land, mm -hmm. then... Well, the EPA has told this couple that they can't build on it and that they had to return the property to the condition it was before they uh, flattened it out and put in some more dirt and, and rock. Who, who did they buy it from? No idea. Yeah. But, but anyway, they told them they were finding them $136,000 a day until they complied, and it went all the way to the Supreme Court. Yeah. It's being argued right now at the Supreme Court. I think that's, that's the agency you have to go to. I don't know. You, you just record record. Exactly. Uh, yeah. The document would be there uh, that would say I, I, I experienced no that not long ago in a company that I was with. We were going to build some buildings, mm -hmm. and we had to go to the EPA and make sure that uh, we could do it. A little pond needed to be filled in and this, that, and the other. And the guy that bought the property, I told him not to buy it. He <laughs> bought it anyway. He said, I'm going to fill that pond in. I said, have you checked with the EPA? Huh? He didn't know you couldn't fill a pond in. Mm -hmm. He didn't know you couldn't cut trees down up there in uh, Irmo. Some of them cost him $100 a piece. But, uh, to, but, but I don't think... The, it's yeah, your, short, your office that does that. You just right. record the short documents. answer to the question is if there is a document there, yeah, make the documents available. I make the documents available okay. for whoever is searching the title. To, the EPA to actually would have to look at it and rule on it. So. 
How long has that been an elective office? Since 1976 or 78, so, somewhere close in there. I and didn't think I, that had always been an elective office. No, right? actually, and this is this is the way it is. In 46 counties, 20 have a separate register of deeds. Seven of those register of deeds are elected. The rest are appointed by the county council. I don't All know that clerks it needs to be an elective office for, per se. <laughs> well, it, and, and the reason that I feel like it should be is because it is a large budget. It is a very is large a, budget. It is $1.5 million but, uh, dollar budget that I think needs to be a, accountable to the taxpayers uh, for that money. Well, uh, as, we receive As in your more case now, you got to go out and spend money and run to be elected to a, a job <coughs> such as this, which is a very important job, by the way. And uh, I, let me insert one thing, then I will be quiet. Since I'm a historian, the Declaration of Independence uh, says in it, that the governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes. Now, I think we need to remember this in her running for this office. She's been in there 15 years. She knows what she's doing. She's been there for a long time. She might need to change some things. If she does, we need to point them out to her and have her try to change them. I don't think we need to re-elect elect somebody else in her place because it's a very, very important. And, uh, and I will say that, that, you know, again, it was on YouTube that there was some torn pages. Um, I did have, uh, implement a program to um, make a change in how flats are made available to the public. It did not work out the way I planned for it. <laughs> I right. now have in my budget a plan to have those plats scanned in so that they will not, you know, scan computerized, digitized plats don't get ripped into one. Well, that's my point. Lost. Quite often from the outside, somebody can look at your, what you're doing and, uh, and say, hey, we need to replace her. But that might not be the answer to what's Gaines, good government. Mr. Gates makes a great point. Stop Witherspoon. Yeah, yeah but what, uh, you've been in four terms? Yes. What's happened to your budget? When you, in today, basically you know, I looked that up yesterday, and um, when I first came in, I, I, I wasn't able to go back to 97 with my predecessor, and, and she had in place a vendor for records management that was costing like three dollars a document. And it was, and, and who I have other respect for. But that vendor had been in place for a long time. I said, you know, let's just check and make sure we're getting the most bang for our buck. So I put out a, a request for proposals and found another vendor that saved us thousands of dollars per year had that vendor in place for several years, and then found another alternative, always working towards saving that money, where we were saving more thousands. Well, plus you went to in-house on your record keeping. Place. That's exactly right. So, so we went from one vendor that had been there for a long, long time to a vendor that I found and then went from that vendor to an in-house system. Do you so, remember what the budget was roughly your first year versus today? I don't. Okay. I don't. I tried to look that up. And they, apparently up. they only keep them for 10 years. No, it has gone down. It has gone down. Yes. Okay. Yes. As I said, I have reduced my staff by one already. And, uh, you know, some of these positions are 25000 some of them are thirty. But, you know, they get a lot of benefits, too. And, when you pay their health insurance and disability and all that kind of thing, that's $10,000 more a year. So, you know, that's a big savings. I have done everything I know how to do to help. Yes. You said that what happened to the dollar budget? Reverend Brian, what did you tell that job? I said that's the bulk of it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
drop it in. Just send a little jacket. Yeah, I understand. I understand. You want to know. I had a cool one. You know, what? It's probably going to be worth $6,000 a day. It's crazy. Any more questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank